You, you know what was like a really bad idea was deciding and planning to make this episode an hour and a half after watching the last episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I, okay, so I have my notes here and then I have my mouth. You guys can't see my notes and uh, you can only hear what I'm saying. Listen, my point is I've got to be careful about how I phrase this because the opinion I'm about to share is not to be controversial. It's not to be special. It's not clickbait and it's not some fake opinion I'm trying to muster to get click views on the internet. This is one of the worst shows I've seen ever. Now, that's not to say it's the worst show ever made, right? I haven't seen a ton of TV shows. And uh, truth be told, if this is a TV show that's bad, guess what? You just don't watch it, right? But uh, my wife and I, we started this show at season one. You got to finish it through, right? We've loved WandaVision. I always say that the worst part of watching a bad movie or a bad show is when everybody else loves it and you're the only one that dislikes it. You're, you're a loner. Well, buckle the freak up because it just really doubles down on everything that makes this show completely intolerable. And newsflash, it even introduces new things that you thought couldn't make it any worse. And they do. So episode three to episode six, the finale, John Walker is basically treated as a villain. We see him slowly turn. And it's finally in, I believe, episode four. It could be episode five, where one of the Flag Smashers kill his best friend, Lamar, noting that he is one of the best characters in the show. He was one of the few who actually made tolerable decisions. The Flag Smasher, or I mean, uh, not the guy, but uh, Carly, the main Flag Smasher girl, basically took him, threw him against the wall so hard, he died. This is what causes John Walker to snap, the new Captain America. In his anger, John Walker chases uh, her second in command, another terrorist guy from the Flag Smasher group, out into the public, of course, where it has to be in the public, and basically just brutally murders him with his shield. I'm not even gonna say brutally murdered. He, he killed him, okay? He killed him in a way that people were sensitive about. So this is uh, the quote unquote turning point of John Walker. From this point, he's just kind of a bad guy. Um, in the following episode, Sam and Bucky chase him down and say, hey, you gotta give us the shield. You just killed the guy, there's blood on the shield. They fight him and then the shield is back in Falcon and Winter Soldier's hands. John Walker is not a bad guy. Uh, let me let me clarify. I don't mean he's not a super villain. I mean, he's a good man. He's a good guy. The fact that I have to explain why this is the case is incredibly sad to me. Okay, this man served in the military, won three medals of honor, is obviously shown to be a good man. From the get-go, they're not showing he's shady and sketchy and has undertones of bad intentions. He's a good man with a good friend named Lamar who are just trying as hard as they can to represent a, an unbelievably and unrealistically iconic person in America. Uh, they set him up. They say, here, you don't get any serum, but you have to live up to all the expectations of Captain America. He does his absolute best. Now, steps along the way that he take, this show likes to sabotage his character, not with who he is as a person, but with music undertones and with lines that the writers force him to have that don't even match his character in order to get their audience to hate him. So let's take a second and objectively look at what John Walker did without emotional undertones of music, without cheesy lines, without evil glares and protagonists and antagonists. Let's look at what John Walker did, okay? From the get-go, he was trying to team up with Sam and Bucky, and they were huge jerks to them. They said, no, we don't like you. Why? Because you're not Steve Rogers. You can't replace him. You know how heartbreaking that would be for you as Captain America, right? You're put in this high up position. You're trying your best. You already are under stress and huge anxiety for being expected to do this great thing. And then and then you get it from two of the most iconic people connected to Captain America. They say, you know what? We hate you, not because we know you, but because you're not Steve Rogers. Guess what? Nobody is. And it's not John Walker's fault. So let's jump forward to the biggest thing that happens that everyone's being a big emotional turd about. Okay. He killed a terrorist. Let me say it again so that we can get a little, he killed a terrorist, okay? Now, not not a, an anti-hero, you know? He didn't kill a guy who was, you know, harmless and just the, the byproduct and the messenger. No, he was the second in command of the terrorist organization blowing up innocent homes that had shown killing people, shooting people, and the same sidekick to the very girl that literally for no reason took a non-superhuman and threw him against the wall so hard he killed him. These are murderers. They are terrorists. And you know what I don't feel bad for? I don't feel bad for terrorists being killed. And neither should you. You know what other terrorist was around for a while that we had been cheering and rooting for the military to find and to take out? Osama bin Laden. 
Yeah, that's right. Guess what? He was a murderer. He was a terrorist. So what did the military do? We, we we found him. You know what happened when he was killed? Relief happened. You know what didn't happen? Pity. Because he had literally just done so much bad. That's what terrorist organizations do. And you know what they all have in common? They all think they're justified for some reason or another. This isn't the problem, right? Because every villain's got to have a story. And But no, that's the worst part, is they spend this whole show trying to get you to relate to, understand, and agree with this terrorist organization. We're just talking about the fact that John Walker killed a man with his shield, a terrorist, and the world goes berserk. Why? Because Captain America is not supposed to kill. So do me a favor, watch the first opening scene of, of Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Okay, watch the really sweet action in that, right? And where he's throwing around the shield on the boat, right? And he's just chucking it at people left and right, knocking them out, hitting them pretty hard. D tell me that at least one of those people didn't die at least right there or at best go to the hospital then die a few days later from a freaking concussion. But guess why it's different? Guess why, why nobody cares? Because it's Steve Rogers, one, and two, because there wasn't blood splattered on the shield. This is how low we've stepped as, as a society. In order to be told that somebody's bad, there has to be blood splattered everywhere. What this is called is writer's sabotage. These writers create a character. In general, every writer has an agenda. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You write a character, you develop that character to make decisions, and then you make that character consistent with himself unless he's supposed to change. And what I call writer sabotage is when a writer intentionally makes a character that they've written and developed make a poor decision or a controversial decision that does not match an ounce of what you've developed that character to be. That's writer sabotage. That's when you realize that they're literally just trying to get you to think something for the sake of thinking something to move their plot forward for their convenience. John Walker, a man who literally honorably served in the military, doing a lot for the military, took up a massive position for Captain America, went on the government's mission to do what they wanted him to do. Because he killed a terrorist, they're cutting him. The, the nerve, they don't even just say you're not Captain America. They cancel him from the military. They dismiss him without any honorary ranks or benefits to any serving active military person who's been, who's been through anything John Walker's been, hypothetically, the wars he's seen, the death he's he's gone through. He's a military man. He literally had to kill tons of people. It's called war. And you know what terrorism is? It's war. It's not justified. It's war. And now everybody's up in arms, angry at John Walker because he's fighting back at the war. Everyone's arguing it's because he did it out of anger and he put blood on the shield. Why does blood on the shield mean so much when literally Captain America's probably killed a bunch of other people that just didn't show their death on screen? The Flag Smashers are trying to do the exact same thing Thanos did. They just have to do it in a much more gruesome, brutal, abusive, terrible, evil way by killing people off individually. Oh, but we can relate to them, right? No, they need a chance. Oh no, they're something to relate to. Oh, why didn't we feel that about Thanos? You know, why didn't he deserve a court trial? Why don't we take him in and then, you know, sentence him to death or or sentence him to, you know, a lifetime in prison? Oh, guess who's the reasonable loving character? Uh, Sam, the Falcon. Why? Because he's trying to relate to this terrorist organization. He's trying to understand. He refuses to kill them. Hey, newsflash, it's probably because of him that these terrorist organizations, these flag smashers killed so many people here. You know what would have solved it all? If they had done what the military does and taken out the terrorist organization, preferably by arrest. But usually they don't go out that way. Usually they, they have to go down with the gunfight because they didn't do it that way because Falcon was trying to be special and relate and say, oh, Carly, she has a real cause. We need to convince her, which by the way, he was proven wrong. So everyone's saying that he was in the right. Go, just go, go away. Can we address that he was wrong and Carly was bad and she was evil? And if you think she wasn't, and she was just a misunderstood little teenage girl, you gotta readjust some life perspectives. We're introduced to Sharon. I believe it's Sharon. It could be Shannon. If so, I'm just gonna say Sharon the rest of the time. I'm just gonna butcher it the rest of the time. I don't care enough to really care. In the last episode, we see a terrorist driving off in a van when suddenly the van crashes and you see his head like disintegrating, okay? And Sharon basically put a vapor in that dissolved him. Was she seen as being bad for that? No, it literally played heroic music over that scene. It's not bad if she kills because she's not Captain America. It doesn't matter. And we, we addressed this briefly previously. We're gonna jump on it now and we're gonna jump hardcore on this bad boy. The cell celebration, the sad tones that we watched when Carly was killed, the nerve that these writers had to celebrate and to pity Carly's death, who is objectively the worst 
evilest character in this whole show. She literally fights Falcon for 10 minutes at the end and he won't fight back for some freaking reason because he's a hero of the story. She literally beats him down unarmed, takes a gun and almost shoots him when Sharon shows up and shoots Carly first. Listen to what I just said. She was about to cold-blooded murder the one person who's had hope for her this whole time before she gets shot too soon to shoot him. Falcon runs up to her, cradles her, and she goes, I'm sorry. What does that even mean? And th the nerve that Sam had to cradle her in his arms, that same per person could diss and treat so poorly John Walker, an, honor an honored military man just trying to do his best and making a couple mistakes along the way. Oh yeah, let's honor Carly, the terrorist organization leader who single-handedly bombed innocent homes. And we celebrated her death by Falcon coming down with the big wings spread out and then lays her on the ground with sad music. That was our sad death of the show. Do you see how infuriated I am? When's the last time you saw me this mad? I love what I do because I love to bring a bright aspect to the world and joke about things. And this honestly fuels me because it's toxic. It's a toxic perspective. You know what we shouldn't be doing? We shouldn't be relating to terrorists and justifying what they do. And I know, I know at this point, everyone's gonna then say, well, did you listen to the Falcon or Sam's big speech at the end about terrorism? I sure did. And it was the biggest load of bull crap I've ever seen. Let's change that speech and pretend, let's just divert it and pretend like it wasn't about equal rights and it wasn't about anything political and about the government being awful. Let's pretend it was about anything else. That was the cheesiest speech I've heard in a live action, big budget movie or TV show easily in the last 10 years. When you have a moral of a story, you don't sit there in front of the screen and say, so kids, the moral of the story is you don't have to have superhero serum. It's all about free rights. Did nobody stop to like ask like, What's he talking about? Like, what does he even mean? The whole moral and the purpose of the Flag Smashers is to stop this big vote taking place where they decide that the people who went away during the snap and came back get to have their homes back, which means that everyone who stayed throughout the snap have to go back to their original homes. It basically puts everyone back where they belong. But you know what they do? They let Sam stand up and, and preach to the senator. You're wrong for making this vote. You shouldn't have to make him go back. And literally the senator said, straight up says, yeah, so if we don't make him go back, there's still the other half of the world that just got snapped back that have nowhere to live. What do you, what do you want them to do? And he's like, you know what? You're missing the point. And he never addresses that argument. So what happens is, is literally instead of the half of humanity that stayed during the snap being homeless, instead of that happening, oh, guess what? Now all the ones who came back after are now homeless. Great, you've solved a bunch of problems, but now we're all politically correct and we're all good hearted, good senators. It solves nothing. It creates a whole new problem. The matter of fact is the government is in a very challenging position in this show. And if you sit there saying, oh, government, government men, bad, bad, bad. Well, it's like, okay, maybe pay attention to the actual problems they're trying to solve because guess what you wouldn't be able to either you'd be stuck in a pickle too expected just to do better and as sam says just you know be better and work harder what does that mean you've got to do better senator you've got to step up because if you don't the next carly will and then at the very end the senator just turns to sam after sam's given this big speech and just says you know what you just don't understand which is an actual fair argument that Sam doesn't understand. He's never worked in politics. He doesn't have to reorganize the world. He's just punching bad guys. You know what Sam responds? He says, I'm a black man wearing stripes. What don't I understand? What does that have to do with anything? You're a black man wearing stripes. Cool, you're the new Captain America. The first black Captain America. That's great. That's cool. How does that help you to relate on virtually any level to the task that these senators and these people in massive power have to control? What does that have to do with the struggles they're going through to reorganize the whole world and having a terrorist organization rise up anytime they disagree? I don't have a problem with fighting for a cause, with fighting fighting for equal rights and, and people who have a purpose. This movie didn't. This show literally just threw stuff in there to make people go, yeah, that's right. And you know what? Now nobody can disagree because if they do, then you're a bad person. And something else, Sam at the end, who, for the record, I think generally was a good character of the show. They just really kind of slaughtered him in the last episode when they shoot, made him speak for like 20 minutes preaching about all this stuff. Like no character gets that much speech time without being accused of just being overwritten. And one of the things that got on my nerves the most in the speech, he's basically saying, listen, I'm the new Captain America. I'm here. No superpowers, no serum. I'm here to do what's right. Oh, you're right. 
You only have a multi-billion dollar vibranium jet pack that has freaking wings that is literally powerful enough to hold up an entire military van from falling off the building. But yes, Sam has the superhuman serum just in the form of a high-tech backpack, which is the only reason he's alive at this point. Have you seen some of the ways that those Flag Smashers bashed his head in? But stop pretending like it's better to have a jetpack than superhuman serum. It's all about how you treat the power that matters. And this last thing I'm gonna say, I think it's probably the most controversial thing. Um, Isaiah Bradley, I think, was started off as a good character, and then they just ended up using him as a writing device to for the writers to spew all the things they wanted to say through the screen. They just used Isaiah Bradley. I think that's very poor writing. I think it was, it got kind of unwatchable at some time. And then at the very end, you figure out that, you know, Sam did him in a favor and basically built a memorial on his behalf, um, built up in the museum. While at surface point, this, this looks like a really sweet thing and I'm not angry at it particularly. Can we look at this from a, a more straightforward objective standpoint? He got this wonderful memorial set up for him, okay? But are we not gonna talk about the other people that survived his same era, who went through the exact same thing? May not have been black men, may have been white men, and might have been Spanish people. I'm sure they experimented all, on all sorts of people because it's Hydra, they were bad. I think it was Hydra who did it. They're bad people. They took all sorts of people and abused them and manipulated this in order to turn superhumans into them. That's exactly what the Winter Soldier is. If Bradley just got this whole memorial and entire room built for him, what about all the other guys who went through the same thing? Does he just get it because he's black? Like, I think everyone should get it if that's going to be the case. And if we're being fair about things, not just because he happened to be the most angry about it. If I'm mistaken and you were able to see other memorials in the background, then I take what I'm saying back. I've been spewing a lot of hate for the show and I'm going to give it a rating in a second, but it's fair. I need to be objective about this and talk about the few good things. Okay. Bucky was probably my favorite part of this along with Zemo. Those two characters were actually really good. Um, his story arc of making immense with these characters was really sweet, really endearing, and I really enjoyed it. I also love Zemo. Um, I think a lot of people liked him in this show, but it's not for a lot of the reasons that some people do. One of the reasons I like him so much is he was one of the few truly consistent characters in this show. Instead, he really acted like himself. And the defining moment where I realized how much I like Zemo in the show was when all those superhuman serum bottles fell on the floor. And he picks one up and you're like, oh no, Zemo, don't do it. And he drops it and he crushes it with his feet. And my wife and I are both like, hallelujah, a character that makes a comprehensive, consistent, smart decision. Because, you know, Zemo is a bad guy, but at least he knows what he is. He has a drive and his purpose is get rid of all superhuman people who have higher power than other people. If you were to be able to kill every single superhuman, he would never fight again. He would be a peaceful, happy man. And you know what that makes? That makes a good villain. One that has an objective, Thanos. You snap half the universe out of existence. Once you're done, you get rid of the weapon so you're not tempted and then you go live a peaceful life. That's what makes a good villain, a compelling one, is one you can relate to and say, listen, he's just trying to do something whether or not I agree with it. Which is the exact opposite of everything these writers gave us with these freaking flag smashers. Some of the worst villains I've ever seen in a show. Why? Because they didn't have an objective. What was it? Kill half of humanity? Stop the vote? Then what? It's never gonna stop. You can't just kill half of humanity unless you have the most powerful stones in the universe in order to snap everyone out of existence. So they're just gonna go around cold-blooded murdering half the universe that they decide they don't like. And the fact that they implied that it made sense and the fact that they implied that it was comprehensive and that was a specific drive and that you're supposed to relate to these villains and these terrorists is awful. It's honestly depressing to imply that humanity wrote this show and, and they're trying to pass it off under the flag and under the banner of, no, we're just trying to understand more people. We're trying to be open-minded. No, you're justifying cold-blooded terrorists who literally just murder people for the sake of murdering people because they're angry. Isn't that the story of 9-11? It's anger. No matter where it is, no matter what conspiracy theories you come up with, it will always come down to some form of hate. It's a load of bull crap. I'm not buying into it. It's bad, it's evil, and it's wrong. At the end of the day, I'm gonna go ahead and slap this into a rating and give the Falcon and the Winter Soldier a two out of 10. We're working hard. We are grinding to make a video every single day. We're still working at it. And I appreciate you guys for tuning in, taking your five to 15 minutes out of your day to watch this. I really do appreciate it. Other than that, thank you for sticking around for my long rants. And I'm excited to see you guys tomorrow. Later, guys.